but it's not just that uh, the, the accusation, if I can characterize it correctly, is not just that, uh, that Kissinger was somehow involved in letting the Vietnamese know that, or, 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 or information that the Johnson administration was entering into these negotiations, but specifically that the Nixon campaign through this woman, Anna Chennault, was suggesting to the South Vietnamese that they should not agree to some sort of a peace deal because, the, because a better deal could be obtained after Richard Nixon was elected. You know, did the South Vietnamese really need Richard Nixon to have been in, informed by anybody that there was a, an October surprise coming that they would then need to sabotage? And uh, anybody who's been properly trained as a historian knows that, that uh, on that test, this case collapses because it was absolutely clear to anybody who read the papers uh, that there was an October surprise in the pipeline, uh, and that, secondly, a Nixon uh, administration would be tougher than the Humphrey administration. Th that was because they'd both made their positions absolutely clear, and therefore the South Vietnamese, who had pretty good intelligence sources of their own, they didn't need any of this to know uh, that, that this was in the pipeline and that they should hang tough before Johnson even made his famous broadcast announcing the bombing halt and the, and the peace talks. Uh, the South Vietnamese government had said they weren't going to play along. So I have to say, um, in the annals of historical scholarship and the foreign policy of the 1960s, this is one of the biggest red herrings I've come across.